what makes our job very challenging is it's a game of inches. It's fighting for every little bit of space. Airplane interiors are a battleground among airlines. Who can make 15 hours straight in the air most comfortable, even if you're stuck in economy? But comfort isn't the easiest to come by flying in a metal tube 40,000 feet in the sky. There are challenges because you're in a very small space with a lot of people. We went on board Delta's redesigned Boeing 777 with the people whose job it is to make flying suck a little less. Delta announced the redesign of its entire 777 fleet back in 2018, and the airline finished updating the 18 planes in Singapore in early 2020. All four cabins underwent upgrades. When that 777 comes in, it has a very old interior, so they rip it all out and they install everything new. There are thousands of hours of engineering that has to be done to install all that equipment and develop the interface diagrams, develop the certification documentation. While Delta has announced it will retire the Boeing 777 fleet, its facelift can still give us a look into how designers maximize limited space on a plane. This is Ashley. Ashley identifies what frustrates customers on board and comes up with possible solutions. So in product development, we have thought about every single inch of this aircraft, from the business class cabin to the size of the closets to the size of the lavatories. Then engineers like Alice figure out how to bring those ideas to life from this fancy lab in Atlanta. What we're trying to do is figure out, can we take that technologies and is it ready to be on an airplane with 281 passengers? at 30,000 feet flying 400 miles an hour. And then if it is, what we do is we want to execute it as flawlessly as we possibly can. So what changes did designers make? We'll start with business class. This whole seat has memory foam cushioning in it. It's designed to be like a mattress, basically. For us, it's all about picking very careful, sustainable, non-flammable materials, but also making sure they're comfortable as well. We also have all of our controls for the seat here. What we really work on is also building spatial mock-ups to really determine that every passenger of all sizes is comfortable in the space here. And if not, then we'll work to adjust. Can we adjust the console size to make it smaller or bigger and give more room here? Every suite also has a fully enclosed door. And if you're in the center seats, then you also have a privacy divider between the two seats. Every seat has a leg rest, foot rest, got a remote control, Got my nice 13.3 inch high definition IFE screen. That in-flight entertainment system is wireless, the first of its kind in the industry. It was developed in that fancy lab. This is our IFE lab. What we've done with wireless seatback IFE, we eliminate the ethernet cable. And by eliminating all those cables that are running all over the airplane, we save about a pound per seat. That's about 281 pounds per aircraft. It basically equates to 1,330 metric tons of carbon emission savings per year. Alice partnered with the Georgia Tech Research Institute to create a software system in the IFE that could easily be updated with new technology. We can't set a whole airplane fleet down every two years and, and redo it all. So we have to think very innovatively. It also has to last a long time. These displays on an A220, that thing flies eight to 12 hours a day, maybe more. It could possibly be on almost that whole time. We worry a lot about reliability as well. Back in Premium Select, beyond the TV, there's also plugs and USB ports and a couple other tricks to designing within the small space. So every seat also has a very large tray table. These seats are so far apart that to put a tray table here, I mean, you would really be reaching. So we put the tray table in the arm. The back of the seat's also grooved out to still give you those extra inches there in your knee space. This is Delta's Comfort Plus cabin. We do want to create that open, airy cabin. Part of that also is just the way that the bins are designed, right? So they're still high enough up that you have lots of space and headroom, but they're big enough to be functional to hold all of our passengers' bags they're bringing on board. All of our passengers usually really care about storage. Probably fits maybe six roller boards, but if I put six roller boards in here, I'm not gonna be able to close it. Delta came to us and said, hey, we, we have this problem. We spend a lot of money on back injuries to flight attendants. Can you guys think of some way to fix it? And so we were given the challenge to say, is there an easier, better way to be able to push up these bins? We partnered with a supplier in Germany to come up with this electromechanical device. The bin lift assist will actually click on when this weight reaches 45 pounds and it will make the close force like I'm closing a bin with only 35 pounds inside. Engineers also had to make the bins durable. These bins are probably used 
you know, 500 times a year by all our passengers. So that means just they take a beating. We have to really be careful about the materials that we put on board to make sure that they're reliable and robust and not breaking. This is really where we spend the most time. I think the hardest part of an economy seat is the inches. So the industry standard on a 777 aircraft is actually to put 10 seats wide. Instead of squeezing in a 10th seat in each row, we maintain nine. Everyone hates getting that middle seat on a long haul flight. So instead of having two middle seats here in the center, we only have one. It's also about giving passengers things to do at their seats while they're on such a long flight. In the event that the passenger in front of me wants to sleep and they recline their seat, then my screen here tilts so that I can get a better viewing angle regardless of what the passenger in front of me is doing. But the design details extend beyond just the seats and into the whole plane. They added more space in front of the lavatories for people to line up. Making sure the aisles are wide enough so that customers can easily get their bags up and down. The flight attendants can also easily push the carts up and down. They also tweaked the lighting system. Our full spectrum LED lighting has seven different lighting scenarios. So for your meal setting, you're gonna have a nice warm orange red color that is supposed to stimulate hunger. We also have a sunset setting, which is a couple minutes of transition, which actually replicates the sunset on board, and then it takes you to night mode. As a designer, I've sat in these seats, I've flown all over the world. I want to know what the experience is like, and I want to know the customer pain points, mainly because I've experienced them, but it's also my job to try to ease those pain points. But making any changes to a fleet, big or small, takes years. We haven't even talked about certification yet. Every single seat that you sit in has been thoroughly tested to withstand an accident if that were to ever happen. Every single piece on here is built with all those certifications and testing before it ever goes on board. Ashley said the 777 redesign took three and a half years. And I would say at least 20 different teams at Delta all working together. We came and we tested it. We had some flight attendants come in and try it out. We did the certification, the installation, and all the engineering so we could put it on the airplane, make sure it was safe, and flew it away.